you got to learn how to run the business so it doesn't run you. And so it, it kind of pissed me off for a minute, but came to the quick realization that's exactly what was happening. Some people start to think that you can have your personal life and your business life, but I kind of think we just experience life from within and whatever is in our life is one life. The people that help me make a, a good business deserve a piece of it. The system that's going to work the best is the system that you actually commit to and you actually do it. There is no decisions made for the benefit of an individual or a group of individuals. The company comes first at all costs. All right, welcome, Ryan. Very excited to have you on today. Uh, your story is super inspiring. Really looking forward to sharing the story with our community. What can you tell me about yourself? Get me, open us up here. I live in the west, western part of Canada. Uh, we run a design build maintenance firm. Uh, for nice people who appreciate details and own luxury homes. I love fly fishing. Uh, we've got three children, the youngest of 26, who's now a 30% owner in our company. And um, I love business, you know, and I participate because I want to at this point. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, Ryan, one of the things that I found most interesting when I first met you was how you run the business and the operating system of the business. Could you just, you know, maybe we'll kick off there Sure. and uh, just describe what that operating system is. So the operating system that I stumbled upon, let's say 17 years ago, was, was open book management. And in particular, open book management as it was defined and, and run by uh, an organization out of Springfield, Missouri called the Great Game of Business. And so realistically, it was just a really good way to get people involved in the company and, and, and focus on the company as the product. We just happened to do landscaping. Yeah. was was is the way we look at it it's so interesting when people start to see it that way because it really does start to evolve in a, in a different way when you start to look at the product and really sort of stop looking at yourself i think often small businesses really start to overly focus on themselves being the business and uh, and that sounds like a transition can they, can we you know maybe go back to the early days in business and describe how you got started, you know, maybe first five years in business, for example, if we could just kind of, uh, where were you at then? Sure. So I, I, after high school, I moved down to Vancouver for a few years and uh, decided to move back to my hometown, Kelowna, and uh, just needed work, honestly. And I, I didn't have any post-secondary schooling. And so um, I grabbed the lawnmower and I said, I'm going to knock on a few doors and, and, and make this happen. And then I just got really interested in it. I've, uh, I've always been good working with my hands and I saw a lot, of a lot of opportunity in the work on the projects that I was on that wasn't being done. Yeah. You know, and I was like, okay, look at that pathway. I'll repair that pathway. And then sure. there's weeds in the lawn. Well, we got to get those out of there. And then yep. the lighting was broken. So you fix the lighting and the irrigation was spraying on the house instead of the plants. And so you'd fix that. And you know, it just kind of evolved. Yeah. And um, I think I had an employee uh, the first year, uh, for sure, one or two the first year, and then, you know, then it went to two or three, and then and that was 1994, you know, four or five, and then we were working with probably 20 people yeah. um, on staff, and uh, we were doing about 1.3, 1.4 million, and uh, it was good, you know, I was making money, and uh, but, I was, but I was tired. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, tired, sure. right? I didn't have a way to manage, and um, I just didn't know any better, Yeah. right? And so that's kind of the first five to... Yeah eight years actually yeah yeah and so uh when what year in business did you decide to to get involved with open book management so i would say that was about 2005 i was talking to a friend of mine on the coast and you know um one of those i can't do this much longer <laughs> moments and, yeah. and then he was always good and you know and, and he said something to me he said well you got to learn how to run run the business so it doesn't run you yeah and so it, it kind of pissed me off for a minute, but, uh, you know, it came to the quick realization that's exactly what was happening. Yep. I said, what do you suggest? He said, you know, Hey, I heard about this book in my EO group. Uh, why don't you grab a bunch of copies of this and, um, read it with your staff. And so we just had meetings based around each chapter. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you actually went through the book with the company right from the time you started reading it? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. But I, in the meantime, while that was happening, I jumped on a plane and I said, I got to get down to Springfield, Missouri and see this for myself. Oh, they wow. Had, they had a kind of a two day, you know, discover the game kind of workshop. And uh, while I was down there, I just found, you know, Jack Stack and all, all the guys that pioneered this way of operating. Realistically, they were just so open. 
Yeah. You know, then it was right in the title, open book management. And yep. uh, they let us walk the factory floors. They let us talk to their, their, their employees. And I just, I said like, if I can't run my business this way, I don't want to run it. Wow. Like, I don't want to be lonely. Yeah. I don't want to turn over people all the time. Yeah. You know, I want people to be engaged. Yeah. I want people to say they're going to stay. I mean, yep. that, those are, that's the things that every owner wants. If you were to, if you were to describe, I mean, you just said the word lonely and that one always hits me as an entrepreneur, because I, I think I spent so many years feeling that way and it does start to bleed into other parts of your life. You know, I kind of believe that we just have one life. You know, some people start to think that you can have your personal life and your business life, but I kind of think we just I experience agree. life from within and whatever is in our life is one life. And, and so that, that loneliness that I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel is, you know, very, very hard to, to fill uh, that gap without some form of like common language. And, and I guess, right. how did you feel um, that transition from, you know, being the lonely, tired, frustrated business owner? How did the operating system fill that void or help you fill that void? And I'm, I'm curious to, yeah. to understand that. Yeah, and I understand all of those all those feelings, and and what you got to realize is that you know it, it's it's not just happening to you. Yeah, and that that's a big realization, and um, and there's a reason why you're feeling lonely. Yeah, you know, and and you have to look pretty hard in the mirror. Yeah. So you know, and as for the operating system, Mark, I think employees are going to fill in the blanks, anyways. Yeah. At the very heart of what open book management is about, um, and it's not open book reporting like the real depth of open book management is getting everybody involved at some level and understanding the realities of the, of the marketplace, the realities of your business, the, the, the ebbs and flows of what happens, a way to really have people understand how their actions and behaviors affect the bottom line, me included. Yes. Yeah. Especially me. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and, and just, you know, when, when you're teaching, and we always break the open book management into two parts. One is open book finance, and that's what most people associate open book management with. That's what I, I, I think that's where most people think it begins and ends. Yeah, and, it, and it doesn't. That's unfortunate. It doesn't because it, and but it's important to know that the reality is the score, the true scoreboard in, in a business are the financials. Yeah, absolutely. But if you give me your profit and loss, Mark, or your balance sheet, I can tell you some stories about people by reading it. Yeah, absolutely. I can do yeah. that. Right? <laughs> I love you might, that. Yeah. And not everybody wants to hear that, but, yeah. and they don't think that their employees need to know. They don't think their employees can understand. They do don't you, think they give a shit. Do you think sometimes that's a reflection of the owner? Like over the years in my own career, when I look back in the earlier years, when I was maybe afraid to tell them about bad results. Yeah. It was actually because I was ashamed of the failure that I saw in myself as a leader. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, I didn't want to tell them that we weren't doing good more because of myself and my own ego as opposed to theirs. It's, it's kind of a funny scenario, yeah. but I, and I don't think at the time, I think if somebody asked me, I think I would have thought, to say, well, I don't want to demotivate my staff with bad results. But I think the reality was I was protecting myself in hindsight. Yeah, Mark, I, what I find, what I really find, I hear this from other people. That wasn't me. I, was always, I wasn't afraid to say mm -hmm. how good or bad we were doing. Yeah. I was open book just by nature. Yep. I didn't deliver it right. Yep. I didn't do it based on the education first. Yeah. I was just spitting stuff out. Yep. Like a wild man. Yep. And in your case, um, I think that it's, it's super important to think, to, to understand that if you have the right people with you, they want to rally. Yeah, absolutely. They want to rally. And yep. if, if they have, if, if they have a shared vision or just a shared mission that, you know, we have to work. Sure. Most of us have to work pretty much our whole lives. So, yep. you know, and, and so if, if we have that agreement that, you know, doing good business is no different than playing a game, you can, you can have those those great feelings of life, accomplishment, you know, challenges, camaraderie, profits. What do you do with profits? Well, you take vacations, you, you know, buy a home, you, you treat your kids well. Sure. So I think uh, it, it starts with a true belief that people want to do better, but they just haven't been put into the scenario to understand how they can make their lives better. That's, that's great. And so the two halves, so the, the finance half, yeah, I tell, tell me a little bit more about, about the other half. I think it's just as important. 
And Absolutely. I think this is where some people who, you know, I'm not gonna say they drop the ball because everyone's got their own version of own book management. Yeah. You know, you talk to some people and they say, yeah, I do that too. I tell people what the numbers are. Well, you're open book reporting. Yeah. And, and you said, I tell them. Yeah. In my company, I don't tell anybody anything. Right. They tell me the numbers. Sure. They own it. Yes. They forecast it, you know, and, and they work towards them. Uh, because, and, and there's lots of reasons for that. I think but, that, that at your company was, was one of the most amazing things when um, we were at your property for a facility tour. And, you know, I think there was 50 of us or so in your shop while you were having your, your monthly meeting. Yeah. And watching your employees run the meeting with you at the back of the room and them report everything from the financials to the culture to the safety and seeing them each take their turn in each component of the meeting and kind of report to each other it was very unique i've, I've sat in on other company meetings and i've certainly held a lot of my own yeah but yours was was truly uh employee led and and I, like that's obviously the result of many years of of putting this in place but that was that was super impressive so i like, just wanted to throw that in there for, for right. That stuff makes me feel good. I mean, that's what an owner needs. That's the space I need to be who I am. That's really at the heart of it, right? You know, and, and we all have different personalities. The guy who starts the business, who's insane enough to, you know, work 18 hours a day for, you know, seven days a week for seven months in a row. You know, those, we're, we're different yeah. in, in some ways. At the same time, we all want the same things. We want to feel secure. We want all that. So I'll get back to your question on the open book finance versus the open book management aspect. And, and people would say it's the soft side, right? So, but we realize that the, the metrics aren't always related to the financials. It's, uh, you know, how many events have been completed in our strong relationship calendar? Why? Because we need strong relationships. Who do we need them with? Okay, we need them with each other. The, the, the owners need strong relationships. We need it with our employees. We need it with our neighbors. We need it with our, our spouses. We need it with our um, vendors, suppliers. We need a relationship with money. People don't have a good relationship with money. So we have events scheduled on our calendar, which we can use as a scoreboard that will help people have a better relationship with money. Financial literacy training, bringing other people in to help them understand what to do with their money once they make it. I mean, you probably got good at making money, but knowing what to do with it when you, when you had it was, it was a challenge. It's been a challenge for me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so, so there's that aspect. Of, and then you can have someone own it. You met Jordan. Um, on my team at that yep. event and, and you know, he owns the strong relationship. Now he has help from other people. Yeah. So he'll report on that. Other things might be related to the employee journey, the customer journey. These are important metrics or drivers towards our critical numbers, which are pe at this point, people and net profit. Yep. Yeah. Because we tie profit sharing to net profit and it's really difficult to tie profit sharing to people. Right. Right? right. So you have a couple metrics there that are that are our main focus. Then we have these drivers and these drivers are often the non-financial ones. Right. Yeah. The things, the intangibles, they're yeah. hard to measure in the moment, but they create the big outcomes. Yeah. But you have to stay focused on two to three of them. Yes. You know, if, you, if your goal is weight loss, you know, that's your critical number. Your two drivers are going to be calories and exercise. Okay. I know that journey. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, it's, it's really not that much more yeah. difficult than that. Yep. But you know, with, in a, in a, in a land of the entrepreneurial land of thousands of squirrels running by you, it, it, it gets hard to know what to focus on when. Yep. What are the two, what are the two things I need to do today to yeah, change yeah. the results tomorrow? Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's great. And so, you know, I can totally see the result in your company. Tell me a little bit about the journey. I mean, I think when business owners hear about an operating system like open book management or EOS or OKRs, there's, yeah. there's, there's many, and, and there's many stories of great results from any. Um, I always think that the system that's gonna work the best is the system that you actually commit to and the yeah. one that makes the most sense and it resonates with you and you actually do it. There's probably, tens of thousands of people that have read the book and not had the outcome that you've had. Yeah. And so what I, I think I, I really want to make sure that we share today is like, how did you commit to making that happen? And how did you 
if, if we want to call it discipline, have the discipline mm -hmm. to stay with it, to see the results that you've actually seen. And because getting to the other side yeah. is always easy. It's uh, in, in any journey. Um, but what, yeah. tell me about that. Well, I think yeah, that's a good one because, you know, we learn by screwing up regularly. And I didn't really realize until the last even handful of years that I had fully committed, even though I was, you know, I'd carry that book around in my lunchbox. And even if I didn't read it, it never left my side. I, I was committed to it. I just said, it's just, it's just too much sense. Involve the players in the game that they're playing. Then they'll understand it better and then give them a stake in the outcome. So they care more. Yeah. It, it, it just all made so much sense, but I think I got in the way a lot. And I think that, and you know it, Mark, we've, I've heard you talk about it. We've had this conversation before. Uh, it, it always boils down to leadership. Instead, in fact, step one in the 10 particular steps of implementing great game of business is begin with the right leadership. Why? Right. Because it's, it's a little different in an old book management company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For and, sure. and so, um, without that, I, I don't even believe it's worth implementing. Yeah. And I, I, I love, I love that you went right to leadership because throughout my career and, and still at this point, when I read, when I learn from peers, mentors, when I first capture the idea and it makes sense, I go out and I start to, to, to implement and yeah. I start to, to measure and, and see an impact and review results. And, and then I try to get a little bit better, but in most cases, a year later, two years later, three years later, five years later, I look back and I realize I just wasn't the leader I needed to be yeah. in order to implement. And I guess for a lot of people, they don't see that part in the moment. And I certainly didn't in the past. I think with, with more self-reflection, I, I'm just always aware that I'm not the leader I need to be in the future. And so I, I focus there. If you were telling yourself on day one, it's okay to, to not be the leader yet, yeah. but I'll be the leader by doing this. Like, like that, that piece, I, I, how did it actually impact your evolution as a leader is I guess what I'm going with this. How much weight would you put on the operating system in your development as a leader? There's, I got so many angles to that, Mark. Uh, yeah. But I think an important one is that when you have something you really believe in like that, and this is all about people. I mean, business yeah. is stories about people. Sure. As simple as that. And when someone says you got to be a better leader, they think that you can't start anything. Right. Until you're that leader. You just don't know. So you start something and you're not that good at it. So you kick, you beat yourself up and, and that's hard on everybody. But you don't know who the other stars are. The people who don't have as much clutter in their life because they're at a different stage of their life that are sitting right beside you. So going together on the journey is important, but knowing how to go together on the journey is the key to, to, to getting that journey going. And I think it was Voltaire that said, you know, perfect is the enemy of the good. You find something, you think it can work. And the answer to how is yes. Just, I love that. Just, I love when you that, say that. Just yep. get that shit done and, and start on the journey. You're not good. It's not going to be perfect. And, um, and it's still not perfect. You know, we still have fires. We still have problems, but we have more firemen and we have better problems rather than bigger ones day in and day out. I love that you, that you're vulnerable enough to say that because I think sometimes people look for a system to be perfect. And when it's not, they use that as the excuse to stop and, yeah. and like seeing how disciplined you've been to stick with it for as long as you have and, and reap the rewards of 15 plus years, I think of, yeah. of running a system in the business and just letting it evolve and get better and better. I think it's so commendable to, to, to see because I meet with a lot of companies and, you know, oftentimes the, the owner wants to change everything every one to three years. And it's like, yeah. well, now we're going to go I've this way there. and now we're going to go that way. And, and, and I think the staff are confused and the, that common language never develops. And, yeah. and in your company, the stronger relationships and the approach to finance is, is systemized. And that common language is no different than any other language in your company. Right. Like they really do understand it, a different, a different easy. set of words. And I standing at the back of the room, I read the book 20 years ago and standing at the back of the room, watching your team speak this very unique language. I use a different operating system in my business and I like to think we understand our common language yeah. and, 
And when I watched your company do this and I watched them come in from a hard day's work and have that meeting, it, it was really inspiring. Like the, the language, tell me about that. The language is super important. Um, and you know, if you look at the, the language of, of the financials on one side, on the book finance side, they haven't changed. They haven't changed in 500 years. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're the same. The balance sheet and the PL uh, look the same in almost in any language. You can yep. look at it in Chinese, I, I wouldn't be able to read it. It's the exact same thing. So uh, it, it's super important because I was, if I was sitting here talking to you in, in Spanish right now, Mark, would you, would you know what we were talking about? No, I'd like to. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, come down and visit gotta, me in I gotta, Mexico. I, I want to learn and Spanish. And we'll, we'll get yeah. you going. Yeah. Um, I guess that's at the heart of it. I mean, if you're not speaking the same language, how can you connect? And, I, and I, there's something super important about, you know, there's, there's all different ways of saying it, but you invite someone over to your house for dinner and if you don't put them at the same table or you put them at the same table and you give them a different meal. I mean, it's like, just get in the trenches with your people on yeah. all levels and just let them win. Nothing's more satisfying I, that, than seeing an employee win, Mark. Yeah, oh no, absolutely. No, it's absolutely. Like that is, that's filling, that's, that's why I'll stay involved. involved. Yeah. Like when I see them winning, when I see it connecting, I always joke with them. I said in the, in the back, I'll say, I'll, I'll make that guy a businessman. He won't even know. I'll sneak it up on him. And yeah. I'm doing something sneaky here, but I'm not. <laughs> but yeah. next thing you know, they're talking about, you know, how will that purchase, that asset purchase affect the depreciation and how will that affect the profit sharing and, and how, what does that look like on the, on the balance sheet and et cetera. And I'm like, he's 22 years old. Yeah. If he was working in another landscape company or any other company that didn't do this, what would they be talking about? Yeah. Oh, I saw it firsthand watching your <laughs> watching your team uh, have un unpack a business meeting. That was you fun. Know, that was great. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the impact that you've seen it have on your people outside of work? Even that, like that part, I I saw that, and yeah. and every one of your employees that I talked to are are incredible people. Yeah. But I, w I I'd love to hear how you've seen it impact them outside of the financials and the bottom line and the, the usual stuff that yeah, us yeah. business owners, they, kind of they focus take it on. home. There's no way it, it, it just becomes part of what you do. I, I can see they take it home because I can think of three in particular that have scoreboards for their personal life, a plan, what they've actually done. And then they forecast out the balance. You know, it might sell, seem all geeky and stuff to, to, to some people, but it works because they're achieving things that they wanted to achieve and following the action. They even set the rewards for themselves. They set a reward for themselves, like simple, something simple. I'm going to buy a new table. I saw that. Like, I, I, so I was I on my it. way to the restroom in your shop, and oh, there yeah. was a there's a big board yeah. where they had some of their personal goals. Right. That was very unique. You know that, that it's not normal in a business to see people's personal goals yeah. on the wall. Like uh, I love. Tell that. me about that. I love that space. I got that idea from from Zingerman's in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, I love it because and then we went a little further than that. We got Colette, who's a partner and an amazing part of our organization. We had her uh, educated and get a, a certificate in, in personal development coaching. So she will work with anybody on, on a monthly basis to check in on those personal scoreboards and we use them so that people can understand that there's other people that have different goals yeah. and we're working next door to them. We're in the same truck with them. We're shoveling with them and it just makes us connect a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me coming on the end of our discussion, I'd like to just touch on the result a little bit. I mean, yeah. we talked a bit about the start. We talked a little bit about, you know, some of the the evolution and obviously the impact on people tell me about like where you're at now and having some partners and how that came to be and 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 i think you know your role today in the business and where you see yourself in five years and maybe how the how the game impacted your ability to create a succession plan sure not every business that does open book management has to share equity right Right. right. And, and I do. And it, it's been my succession plan. And, and it, I just believe that the people that help me make a, a good business deserve a, a piece of it. Sure. And, and I couldn't think of any better way to do it. So uh, it's helped me uh, because it's what it's done is and, and, and there's lots of nuances to how we structured it and why it works. But I've heard so many times, well, how do you do that with all these partners? Aren't you butting heads? What's your I said, we're six years? There has not been once. I know that sounds like a fairy tale, but it's the culture that guides us. There is no decisions made 
for the benefit of an individual or a group of individuals. The company comes first at all costs because the company's the goose that lays the golden egg. Yep. And when you feed it well, in return, you eat well. Yeah. So that's huge for me. And, and it's the people that keep me want to stay involved. So in the next five years, uh, and, uh, and, and even you, Mark, your journey is, is, is inspiring me to stay involved with these people and, and take it, just help them take it to a new level. Yeah. Uh, my day to day is, is I, you could find me sweeping the floor or turning the compost pile on the farm or just, you know, filling up the water bottles for the guys, or I could be on a site. Yeah. Not very often yep. anymore. Uh, but uh, I could do that. And then of course, you know, I do some business coaching, consulting. I'm a certified business coach with the great game of business. The only one from the green industry and the only one in Canada. So I do that and I work with people that fit the leadership mold. I don't want people not to win at implementing this, which goes back to your comment a, a little while back, right? If they start it and say, well, it doesn't work. I know it works. Yeah. I know it works for every single person who will try it and stick with it. Yes. 100% it will. It's just, they, you know, it's hard to get over the hurdle sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I really do love that. And I know your why and I know I, I, I see it and I know it very well. You truly want to help other businesses yeah. untap their true potential by using this system because you've done it. I believe and, in business. Yep. Yeah. I believe that we're the new educators. Yeah. I'm the guy you could find me crying watching Shark Tank. Like, yep. That's just me. You know, yep. the guy who sleeps in his car to make something happen that he believes in. To me, that's just inspiring. It's something I love to do. And, um, and I'm willing to help anybody that's interested. Ah, incredible. I love that. <laughs> well, thanks for joining today. And uh, thanks for everything you're doing. You're leaving your mark on the industry. Well, wow. and uh, that is the name of the company, right? I'm our Mark trying, Consulting. Yeah, so. Our Mark Consulting. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just trying to keep up to you, Mark. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Well, All right. Uh, thanks for being here. You bet. Take care.